Good afternoon. Well, go after all these years, um, I'm back at Ren Le Chateau, which is uh, in the in the in the Cathal country. You know the famous place, the one that was used for the Da Vinci Code and the based on the information that was found, the secret documents that found by uh, the the priest Sonia. You can go and look all that up. You know, it's um, it's it's connected to the Priory of Sion. Uh, they, they invited him to Paris and he ex became extremely wealthy and he built the church which is here and the castle, the tower over there, the Magdalena Tower. There's a whole story about it, I haven't got time to go into it on here. I'll show some things inside when I get in but um, I've been talking about symbolism for years, anybody who knows me and knows my, my, my work and uh, just up here you see the skull and crossbone and the, um, the crucifix which are symbols of life and death or control over life and death and the it might seem like a very simple symbol which it is however uh, obviously the cross relates to uh, the religious connotations of Christianity Egypt crucifixion all those things it also relates to the Orion constellation relates to the cross of Orion, the son of man, the son of Atom. And the skull relates to Golgotha, the idea of the, the, uh, the place of the skull, where the, um, you know, the seat of consciousness sits in the brain or connected to the pineal gland. And without going into great detail, but you know, the idea of the crucifix taking place on Golgotha, originally, supposedly, and the crucifixion took place on the, at the place of the skull. Now it's a very interesting thing because when you get in the church, when you, when you go here, you see that there are two effigies of the so-called Jesus figure. Uh, one is meant to be the Baptist and the other one is meant to be Jesus. They both look identical, they're seen as twins in terms of the twin symbolism. And according to the Templar and the Knights Templar and the secret societies, particularly the Priory of Sion, which is what this place is connected to, they saw the Baptist figure as being more important than the Jesus figure in their symbolism. And here we have the Baptist and Christ together. We also have life and death, Masawa and Kokopelli, uh, Seth and Horus. It's all in the of uh, life and death in this reality being controlled by the, the so-called creator that the Gnostics called Satan, the Demiurge being in charge of this portal, this understanding. And this whole area, by the way, is really, really connected to um, a huge sacred geometry in the landscape that was picked up by Michel and Wood in their books. Uh, it goes right out to Bugresh, where I've just come through and all these other places that links. It's a very strange vibe actually. It's, it's nice in parts, but very odd in others. It's kind of like a, uh, like a portal, an interdimensional portal. So I'm gonna take some photographs inside and I'll come back to you um, when I can. But yeah, very, very glad that I got back here after all these years. So uh, I'll speak to you in a little bit, okay? Oh, by the way, I'm gonna go inside. And as I film inside, there's, um, there's a picture, there's a statue of the devil in the doorway with the inscription saying this place is terrible and I've mentioned this in other videos that the, uh, the Cathar Gnostic understanding which is the foundations of what this place is really about and also the connections to the so-called Priory and the supposedly blood, bloodline of Magdalena and Jesus and all that stuff in the Da Vinci Code which I don't genuinely buy into but the knowledge and the information is encoded in this place so um, We'll go inside very quickly and you'll see the, I'll leave, it, leave the camera rolling and you'll see the devil on the door. Because this place is terrible. 
Okay, catch you in a bit. Il fait chaud, as they say in French. Wow, okay, so I'm still at Rennes the Chateau, of course, and here behind me is the, um, is the Magdalena Tower. And um, it's all connected to the other point that goes around there as well, the whole of this periphery. And I just wanted to say something about it. You know, um, with the Sonia mystery and the whole uh, understanding of the treasure that was found, they say that, there's very various um, theories, but they say that what Sonia found here was the, um, the treasure of Blanche de Castile, which was one of the uh, aristocratical bloodlines in France connected to the Cathars way back in the uh, 11th century when the Cathars were being purged as a heresy. And the reason why they were being purged was because of their, um, their understanding of the Gnostic teachings and how it opposed the the Vatican's understanding of, uh, the, you know, of the, their version of Christianity as such. It was two versions of Christianity. One was Gnostic, Gnostic. one was Roman Catholic. And um, to keep it simple, basically the goddess was being venerated in these places, hence the Magdalena Tower. Um, and under the understanding of Gnostic teaching, um, Sophia was the goddess the goddess of wisdom and you'll find when you go to some of these Cathar places you'll find the obvious symbolism in the uh, architecture you go to Carcassonne you have the lady of Carcassonne you go to these other places you'll find the goddess symbolism not least sometimes you'll see the symbolism in in certain um, uh, sculptures that relate to mermaids and relating to the sea and the goddess of the sea and all these other things the goddess of the land uh, to keep it simple, basically the, the, the Reading the Chateau mystery was based on the findings of a priest that started to venerate the Gnostic teachings through the, um, through the chosen symbolism and architecture here. And whether or not he was invited by the Priory of Sion or whether or not it, it was relating to the Merovingian bloodline which goes back to the, the shepherd kings of Egypt hence the Nicholas Poussin painting of the, uh, the shepherds of Arcadia because that, that symbolism there relates to the fact that they're pointing to a, a tomb which was meant to be here as well um, there's a whole different level or layer of symbolism attached to all of that, but it all fundamentally comes back to the understanding of Gnostic teachings. And the interesting thing also was that it looks like Sonier, when he, when he had the church built here, and as I said, there was the, um, the devil, Asmodemus, put at the doorway on the Masonic floor, saying this place is terrible. This, in many ways, was a symbol of the Gnostic teachings. Because what they were saying, the Gnostics and the Cathars were saying the same thing, is that this place was terrible. Not necessarily meaning the location, give and take the fact that there is some kind of weird portal stuff going on here. But the whole of reality was an illusion, whether it's flat or not, by the way, who flat earth as you. Hey, look at that, it's quite flat, isn't it? Well, it's kind of lumpy flat, you know. It was an illusion. It was a projection or illusion and a creation by a false god. The false god was epitomized in the sculpture as you enter the church there, in the picture that I, I, I mentioned earlier. And the whole of the secret here, for me, is based on the fact that there was some kind of um, hidden knowledge that linked to Gnostic teachings which was based on the Cathar understanding of creation and reality, that they were put in, letting certain people put out at the time. Actually, at the time, it didn't matter too much because the Catholic Church was losing its power by the time we'd got to the 8th, 19th century anyway. Um, they had a good go at, at kind of grabbing power again in France when they, they unveiled the Brotherhood of the Wolf and the Beast of Gévaudan and all of those things up to the point of the, um, the revolution. There's so, much, so many layers to it. 
Um, but yeah, so anyway, the tower relates to Magdalena. The tower is a symbol, of course, of the, the tower and the tarot. And you've got all of that and this beautiful landscape, which, like I say, stretches right out to the, um, the foothills of Spain and is full with sacred geometry. I've spent many years in this area and it's, um, yeah, it's both beautiful and strange and disturbing in many ways. But, but that's life, isn't it? Anyway, I'll come back to you in a bit. Thank you.